Okay, so you want to configure a new PC, then watch out, I'm going to tell you my well, secret of always building the perfect balanced gaming PC. Obviously, de depending on your preferences or your needs, this can vary, but this is a guide on how to pick the perfect parts pretty much always depending on your budget and always build a relatively balanced gaming PC that will last for years to come and also work for pretty much any games. First of all, why is this? Well, because of bottlenecks or rather because of GPU and CPU configurations that don't really match together, such as an extreme example would be a 4080 and a Ryzen 4500 which obviously does not match. So the CPU would be the limiting factor and in many games you wouldn't really be able to reach the full potential of that 4080. But you can eliminate that by going from or off of your budget, which is pretty much the rule of thirds. So let's just say you have a budget of 1500 bucks. We are going to use the rule of thirds. So we are using two thirds of the budget for GPU and CPU. So 66% for GPU and CPU, but we have to later then divide that again. And the other third, the 500 bucks, we are going to use for the other components such as motherboard, power supply, storage, case, um, CPU cooler, and RAM. So it might sound kind of weird because 500 bucks for everything of that versus like 600 bucks for only the graphics card seems kind of weird, but this is the most balanced system you will get. So for our CPU and GPU bundle, we are going to use those $1,000 and divide them again into thirds and use one third for the CPU and two thirds for the GPU. It always makes more sense to choose a more expensive GPU because not always are GPUs really expensive nowadays, but also for gaming obviously you need more GPU power. This is why this is only for gaming systems. On a workstation for example you would use a different style of math I guess to configure your system, but this is the my recommendation for gaming systems. And again, so we have about 660 bucks for the graphics card and 330 bucks for the CPU. Obviously, this can vary somewhat. You could choose a CPU that's 50 bucks more expensive and a graphics card that's a bit less. But in general, that's the kind of price range you are going to get your best um, combination. In this case, we would choose the 14700KF from Intel. So this is a unlocked CPU, which has a decent amount of cores. It's pretty much the, not top of the line, but one below that, so the i7. And uh, that is pretty much going to handle every game you throw at it. And um, also in tasks like video editing or whatever, or a 3D rendering, if you're using it for that, it also will perform very well. In terms of GPU, we have 660 bucks, as I said, and there you could choose either a 7800 XT, for example, which is about 580 bucks. So that's a bit less because the 14700K is a bit more. That would be kind of the optimum configuration. You could also choose an Nvidia card if you prefer them. And that would be like a 4070 Ti or whatever. Um, just look at the prices and look uh, at what matches your budget. And if you have chosen those two components, then there's basically the rest for those 500 bucks. This may seem kind of counterintuitive because motherboards uh, tend to be really expensive as well, but you gotta restrain yourself a bit here because motherboards have a lot of features that you uh, most of the time don't really need. The best value of the motherboard you can find between 150 and 200 bucks. So pretty much look at that. And as because 1500 bucks is kind of still a value PC build is going heavily into that here as well. Um, you'd have to choose somewhere in that price range. For this system, 
For example, this would be the case for either a Z690 motherboard or a H760, depending on if you want to overclock or not, although with that system I wouldn't really recommend it since the CPU is clocked relatively high out of the box, but um, there are plenty of options in that price range. Obviously, you gotta keep in mind if you want some special features like 10 gigabit or whatever, you have to be prepared to spend a bit more and then maybe that rule of thirds will not apply anymore. But as I said, as a guideline, this is pretty good. Going next to the memory, I would also always recommend on the gaming system, go for 32 gigabytes because 16 gigabytes can be, uh, can be cut in a close in some applications and some games. So 32 gigabytes, uh, in this case DDR5, I would recommend 6400 or 5600 at least. Uh, that can be paid for about 80 bucks. A decent power supply that is ATX 3.0 compatible. A list of which power supplies are good. You can find on the Linus Tech Tips forum, there is a guide on which power supply is ATX 3.0 compatible and also is from good quality. For this system, I would recommend 600 watts with 80 plus gold certification. As for storage, I would just go for one single SSD. In this configuration, everything else above that will go on top of the thirds rule, also will be outside of the budget. And you gotta consider this because we cannot obviously take into account if you take a one terabyte SSD and a six terabyte hard drive, obviously that would not work within that budget, but that's obviously something to keep in mind. The other thing would be the case. That's pretty much your choice. Um, I would recommend something for around 60 to 80 bucks. Factory design in this price range always has something to offer that either looks decent and also performs very well or is very quiet. And uh, the last thing would be a CPU cooler. You're pretty much free to go here. I always recommend be quiet. The Shadow Rock or Pure Rock series is pretty good as it is also pretty quiet. Or you could choose something from Cooler Master, Noctua maybe if you can find something in the 40 to 50 bucks range. Or as I said, if you want something RGB, you might have to go for a bit more expensive, but that's something that's cosmetic and that is going also on top of those 1500 bucks or on top of that third rule. That's basically it. And you can do that for every price point. Even at 600 bucks, you could go for 400 bucks for GPU and CPU, which obviously this would be quite difficult again, because um, going for a 150 bucks CPU, which would be a 5600 for example, and a 250 bucks GPU, which would be a 6650. And then you would have to look for very cheap other hardware. On a system like this, I may go for a half, half and half rule. So 300 bucks for the CPU and GPU and 600 uh, and 300 bucks for the rest of the components. But everything above 1,000 euros or $1,000, you can pretty much use the third rule and that will pretty much be the ideal setup and it will last you quite a bit. And most of the time, the CPUs in those configurations are that strong that you can upgrade your graphics card in the next few years if you need to and still have enough CPU power. And this is something that I really like because Obviously, if you buy a perfectly balanced system, then you might have to upgrade the whole system and uh, buy a new one once the system gets too slow. In that case, it's not really ideal. Obviously, you could just sell the old system and buy a whole new one, but that's another different story. I hoped you could take away any th something from this information or and uh, yeah if you like this video let me know in the comments below and by pressing the like button if you like the content we do here press the subscribe button and otherwise i wish you a nice day and goodbye